Well, hi, this is David Thornburg, President and CEO of the Committee of 70, and welcome to another edition of Studio C70, which is our digital platform to give voters a sense of candidates in the upcoming election and the issues that matter to them and we expect to you. I'm joined today by Rebecca Reinhardt, who is the, uh, the uh, current city controller, uh, who is running in an unusual election, both in the primary and in the general, in that she is running unopposed, but uh, all the more reason to, uh, to have her here. And, and thanks for joining us, uh, Rebecca. Oh, I'm happy to be here, thanks. Good. Well, let's. Uh, you are an incumbent, uh, so let's let's start with your last four years. Uh, what are your major accomplishments? Sure. So I took office in 2018, um, really uh, with a, a mandate for change. Right. I mean, I I won an upset. Most people didn't think I was going to win, or most people that. Uh, that felt that they knew about politics, didn't think I was going to win. So, um, and I won with 58% of the vote. So I came in with a mandate, I think from people that they wanted change and they wanted some disruption to the status quo of how Philly government operates. And uh, so I feel like I've done that uh, in the first term, I hit the ground running uh, in terms of biggest accomplishments. A few things. I mean, I've, of course, done the required work of my office. I've audited every department every year, which uh, hadn't always been done in the past, even though it's required. And in addition to that, I've done, uh, did special audits on issues ranging from the city's sexual harassment policies, procedures and payouts to uh, an audit of the parking authority. Um, and uh, one thing that uh, uh, got a lot of um, attention, even though it's a very dry, it seems like a dry topic, which is my office's audit of internal controls, which came out in 2018. And that's the audit that uh, showed that the city hadn't reconciled its largest cash account in three years and that 33 million was unaccounted for or missing, however you wanna say it. Um, and it's a big deal. I mean, that's unacceptable. So there was a public uh, back and forth between uh, the mayor and myself over that because to me, it is unacceptable that the city um, had and still has the worst internal controls of the top 10 largest cities. So, uh, you know, my office did put attention on that issue. We went back in in 2020 and did the same audit and found that there has been improvement. Uh, has it been enough? No, uh, but the city is reconciling its largest cash account now. The majority of that 33 million was located about 528,000 had to be written off. Um, there's still the most material weaknesses and significant uh, deficiencies of the top 10 largest cities. But there has been improvement, and I don't know if that improvement would have occurred if not from that public scrutiny and public pressure from my office's audit. Uh, so I am proud of that and the work my team did on that. And then also uh, my office has used uh, data, uh, um, data and transparency uh, to help push good government. And uh, I think that's really important. And, and I'm proud of that work, ranging from data releases uh, to a work around specific topics. So I, I think that's all, um, I'm proud of all that. Good. Um, you know, your office, uh, you know, established in the city charter is, as many folks say, the, the fiscal watchdog of, of the city. So in addition to, uh, pointing out those areas in which uh, the city administration's uh, de deficient. Um, you um, uh, are also charged with uh, looking for ways to uh, improve the efficiency and effectiveness and, and performance of government. So uh, again, looking back four years, contrasting with, with today, what's, what's your sense of how well city government is working and, and in what ways beyond the, the fiscal audits that you just spoke about, have you and your team been able to uh, 
uh, push or prod or use carrots and sticks to uh, to deliver better government for Philadelphians. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think that there uh, is a lot of room for improvement uh, in how Philly government operates. Uh, one thing that I felt strongly about is that uh, coming in, I didn't want any of my office's audits just to be sort of a splashy headline and then not actually result in any change. Um, so all of our audits have recommendations and we've done uh, six month, one year, and even year and a half reviews uh, of those audits to measure progress. And um, there have been a good number of instances when uh, commissioners of certain departments have been uh, willing and happy to work with my office to make improvements. And that's not the stuff that necessarily makes headlines, but it is sort of the nitty gritty of government operation that uh, I think does help move the city forward. Um, so I think that there has been improvement in some areas, but there was a lot of change that needs to occur. And a lot of it's not around the edges. It's it's transformational change, I think, that, that needs to happen. I think this is in that vein, but let me just relate this uh, sort of uh, a situation. I teach in the Temple Master's Public Policy Program, a course on leadership. Okay. And um, on the module that was around uh, communicating uh, public performance, I asked the students to take a look at the city's website to answer basic questions about about goals uh, and outcomes and progress to outcomes. And mm -hmm. let's just say the students suggested that the city came up a little short mm -hmm. in, in communicating where we were headed, how well we were doing, how well we were spending our money and so forth. What, what would be your comment from your uh, perspective on that question? And is there something that your office has done and would like to do to kind of encourage more of that transparency and accountability. Well, David, I agree with your students there. I, I do think that uh, whether it's the city website or the mayor's administration should be more um, outwardly focused on goal setting related to outcomes and then measuring those outcomes. So for example, um, whether it's uh, gun violence or education, you know, reading by fourth grade or um, the poverty rate, um, business development, whatever the, the goals, um, the biggest problems are that the city needs to tackle, I think should be each listed. And then, well, where, where is our city under, you know, the mayor should be saying, where is our city heading on this on this uh issue and where what what am i going to do and what is the city going to do to push this issue to make it better and then where is our goal one year from now three years from now you know etc uh and then how do we measure up to that that is that type of goal setting transparency communication around that is not occurring and um one thing that, um, I mean, my office has done uh, data releases around key issues such as gun violence. We created uh, a mapping tool on our website, controller.phila.gov, that uh, updates every day automatically, that takes the data from the police department and data from the courts and shows each shooting uh, every single day, maps it out, uh, you can divide, you can separate it by all different types of variables. Uh, and it's that's being used. And that's the type of, of data that should be out there. And then the way that we should be measuring ourselves too as a city. So I, I agree with your students. And, and I do think that's the way to move forward because then you can, you can tie your budget to that and then ideally, right? And, and then if it's not moving those variables, you should be redirecting funding to things that do work. Well, as you know, cause I know you've studied this and I suspect taught that, that is the, uh, that is sort of nirvana for public management types. And so 
maybe I'll next time around I'll uh, assign a couple of my students to uh, to work with you on that. I would love that. I would love that because that is there needs to be the political will to actually uh take money away from things that aren't working to fund things that are working but that is the ideal way that the government the only way the government's going to really work yeah so just one more question on sort of past and then we'll move into present and future but uh, you were quite critical of the response the police response the police leadership response to the civil unrest of last summer uh summer of 2020 and and also i believe of some of the handling of the the covid uh, uh, uh testing and distribution plans in the early days of of this year um just talk a little bit about your your findings there and whether you think you're the voice of your team and the work you've done has uh has moved the ball has has mm -hmm. improved those situations so on the police response to the civil unrest uh, following George Floyd's murder last May and June, my office did an investigation of the city's response. And what it found was that there was a failure of leadership up to and including the mayor. So that went beyond actually the police department um, and was a larger, a larger failure. Um, what the investigation found was that uh, there really, there was no advanced planning uh, in the way that there should have been uh, in the days leading up to those protests. And there was a variety of reasons why. I mean, the position of Homeland, the Inspector of Homeland Security position in the police department was vacant at that moment. The police commissioner had only been here a few months. Um, the head of emergency management had left the city in 2018. The mayor had made the decision not to hire um, an independent director of emergency management, but to let that be co-filled by the fire commissioner. And there were a variety of other uh, gaps um, that uh, sort of created this cascading uh, negative consequence in terms of planning. And so there were recommendations that went along uh, with the investigation. And my office has um, had one meeting and we're actually set to have a second meeting with the police commissioner and her team around it. And that's been a productive relationship. So um, I think that's the way, um, that's the way that good change happens. So um, I, I think that's working in the right direction. Okay. And um, on the uh, the vaccine, uh, my office is doing the vaccination programs. My office does do investigations. I do have subpoena power, and we do investigations when the need arises for investigations. One of those issues was the uh, was and is the Philly fighting COVID uh, debacle with the vaccination program, and that is an investigation that's still ongoing in my office. So I can't really comment more on that, um, but it's that specific uh, area that's being that's being investigated. Well, I'll just slip in the editorial comment that the most often asked question around our office when that whole situation was revealed is, who could have possibly thought this was a good idea? <laughs> so take that for this. Right. Um, let's let's go to uh, right now and uh, the upcoming election. What a difference four years make for you. Uh, four years ago, you were locked in a, what was anticipated to be a very heated primary, maybe mm -hmm. turned out a little more tepid. But now you have no opposition in the primary and no opposition in the general. So is this a good thing for the city of Philadelphia? Well, I think that um, the fact that I have no opposition, and there could be an independent candidate, um, not trying to encourage anyone, but <laughs> there could be still. Um, but I think that uh, that doesn't just happen that easily. Um, it is what it is. I think I put a lot of time and energy into building up a financial base, a fundraising uh, financial base, um to have the strength so that people would think twice honestly before challenging me that's part of politics and 
I think that if uh, I take very tough stances and have made some people in power upset, I know that. And so coming into my reelection, I put the energy and time into, okay, I need to have a strong balance sheet in order to at least make people think twice before trying to, you know, that entrenchment, anyone from that entrenched side trying to, to challenge me. So to me, it is what it is. It, uh, the, the fact that, I'm, that I don't have a challenger giving me more time, of course, to, to focus in, do my job. And then, you know, I've also um, have uh, endorsed a slate of judges. Uh, there are other races going on, right, as you know. Um, and, uh, you know, just uh, moving forward and take take it just as a part part of what happens in life. Sometimes there's a tough fight and sometimes there's not. Sometimes there's a walkover. Yeah. Um, so let me slip this question maybe a little off the menu. But one of our issues has been um, at the state level, mm -hmm. uh, allowing independent voters to vote in primary elections, which mm -hmm. is you no, know, they can't. They can't vote in for candidates in primary elections. There are more independents in registered in the city of Philadelphia than Republicans, and those folks sit on their hands uh, on or around May 18th. Mm -hmm. Would you favor uh, the idea of, uh, uh, of allowing independent voters to vote in primary elections? No, I think it's an interesting idea. I think uh, the idea around allowing independent voters to vote or doing some sort of rank choice um, uh, so that there's a, a runoff like they do, I think in Georgia. Um, I think there are some interesting ideas that would get more overall voter involvement in a city such as Philadelphia, which is eight to one uh, Democrats or Republican. So I'm always interested in things like that, that um, improve the democracy of the city and um, so, you know, this is just me in my opinion, but I, I think that uh, we should seriously consider anything that would encourage more people to be involved in their government. Yeah. Well, you mentioned it and I know you went to school in New York and uh, worked in New York. I don't know, are you from New York as well? No, I'm from the Philadelphia suburbs. Got it. Yeah. Anyway, all eyes will be on New York in early June when they uh, when they use ranked choice voting in their municipal elections for the first time. So Great. that'll help them, we hope, sort through 20 some candidates for mayor, uh, which wow. otherwise uh, could be a zoo, probably still will be a zoo. Um, let, let's let's talk about uh, 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 on the presumption that you get close to 100 percent of the vote uh, <laughs> in this primary and in the general. Let's let's talk about the next four years. You you probably um, it's probably occurred to you uh, as the pandemic roared to life that that is not something anybody anticipated four years ago, mm -hmm. and that brought with it a sense of uh, uh, of challenge, uh, unexpected challenge. So how how does that shape your thinking about your agenda for the next four years? Yeah, that's interesting. So one of the things we're working on right now, which is of course coming out of the uh, pandemic is the American Rescue Plan money coming in. Uh, the city sets, as you know, set to get about $1.4 billion, um, which is a lot of money, even for the city. Uh, the city's budget deficit uh, announced by the mayor um, before the ARP money uh, amount was announced was about 450 million. So 1.4 billion is a lot. And I do think we need to make good strategic decisions coming out of the pandemic. The city is facing a lot of challenge right now. Um, you know, you just have to walk around uh, downtown to see it. And we all know from the data that uh, the pandemic has increased inequality in our city and across the country. So it's more important moving forward that government works better than ever. And I, I do think that it has increased the necessity of a role like the controller in my office because of that importance of how we come out of this. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it does shape what my office does and uh, will shape it and continue to shape it. 
And, and along the same lines, I think maybe one of the last times I saw you in person was at a, uh, uh, a little workshop that the Pew folks put together on the future of PICA, the mm. Intergovernmental Cooperation yeah. Authority, which is some folks, or maybe a lot of folks know who watching was created in the early 90s to basically uh, get the city out of uh, a fiscal, a major fiscal hole, but also created uh, structures like a five-year plan and uh, rules around uh, uh, city contracts and so forth. And, the, and PICA is, is expected to expire, would be in your next term. And I, mm -hmm. I think I remember, although you can correct me, that you, you felt that renewing PICA, at least in its current form, wasn't a necessity or maybe even advisable. Did, did I have that right, or or do you have it? Partially, a, a, yes. I mean, I, what I, I'm looking at it from the perspective, and this was pre-pandemic, but uh, that in order to get PICA renewed, um, there would have to be a, a, a lot of negotiations, right? It would need state legislature approval. Um, what would that look like? Remember that when PICA was created, that the city was in a crisis. And when you're in a crisis, it's probably the best time to get something good, decent passed. Um, we're not, um, with this American Rescue Plan money, we're not in a crisis situation. Uh, what I worry about is the politics and the patronage aspect of whatever happens uh, to a PICA if renewed. Um, because we do have to think about something like, for example, the parking authority and the patronage associated with that, you know, what, what does happen with a renewed PICA, it could be not just, uh, oh, we're going to extend PICA, but what else is tied to that, right? So um, I do think that it's very important that we maintain five-year budgeting. It's very important that we maintain quarterly reporting. Uh, that all can be done at the local level. So my point was at that Pew panel, was that PICA was established 20 years ago for a specific purpose, specific reason. It always planned to sunset. Uh, we have the ability at the local level to mandate that the city does the five-year budgeting quarterly reporting. And I'm always for local control. So, I mean, I don't want to say always, but in general, I'm for local control. So that we should control our destiny and we should be able to do that. So that that is my point of view. Right. Uh, yeah, I which know would I went just, over there a which bit. Would, would require a certain amount of political will and political leadership um, in order to you know keep that local and keep that in place. So right, but then we uh, should be adults, right? We should be able to do it, right? <laughs> totally agree. Okay. We have not always demonstrated that in the past. I, I know, I know, but uh, hope springs eternal. Right. Let's just close with a, this is a question we ask uh, folks in these uh, in these uh, in these series. Um, this is the sort of never and always question. So if you're reelected, presume you will be, what would you uh, always do and what would you never do? Um, always stand up for what's right, question what's wrong. Um, that's uh, why I ran for office and my compact with the people. So I will always do that. Never, um, never, I'll never be co-opted. I mean, that's, that's my uh, promise to myself and um, to when I ran for office. So uh, when, when I, you know, whenever I make a decision and I get, start to get political pressure from it and I just, you know, remind myself this is, um, I don't, uh, I don't owe these powers anything. I owe the people something. They voted for me. So that's my moral compass and, uh, sort of my guiding star. So. Great. Great. Feels like a good note on which to end. Uh, okay. so thank you, Rebecca Reinhardt, city controller for joining us. Thank uh, you. folks, just as a reminder to, to find out and make sure you're well-informed for the May 18th election, just go to uh, 70.org. You learn about local candidates, judicial candidates, important ballot questions in Pennsylvania that uh, really uh, could affect the balance of power in Harrisburg and therefore your lives. 
And, um, and Rebecca, we uh, hope to see you uh, again in the fall, or if yeah. not sooner, sometime in person. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks, David. Okay. I would love that. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.